I started my week by finally setting up the router table that Rockler sent me. Awesome thing, check it out. As you can see, I put it next to my table saw so I could use it as an additional support when I'm cutting bigger sheets. I'm not sure if this setup's gonna work out. I will try because this would be, this would be pretty neat to have, like the router and the table saw, kind of back to back. Another thing that Rockler sent me is the uh, T-Track tabletop. I'm struggling with space a little bit, so I'm not sure if I wanna have this as, an, as a separate uh, standalone table. So I was thinking I could put the T-Track tabletop right on top of my outfit table and level it out with another piece of wood that would go on this side. And that way I would have it integrated in my huge outfit table. I think I'm pretty happy with this idea, so let's go for it. So the tabletop is installed and secure as you can see. The wooden part is about three millimeters higher than this table. I made this so I could cover this up with a thin sheet of MDF or something in case I wanted to use the whole table to spray something or you know in case I just need the whole table as a flat surface so I don't destroy this t track tabletop. Let's check out all the accessories that Rockler sent me. So this tabletop accepts lots of different um, little gadgets that you can slide into those rails. For example, these Autolock t track clamps. Take a piece of walnut and then you can clamp it and it's super tight. They also offer these hold down clamps that are extremely useful. They have these little adjustable stop blocks and also smaller versions of those stoppers. While I was playing around with all the little gadgets, I had an idea. So I think this setup will be very, very useful in the future, especially when you think about stop motion stuff that I'm getting into more and more lately. Um, to be super flexible with your light, that's all stuff that I was struggling with. I'm sure you will see more of this in my future videos. Okay, moving on to some questions that I got on Twitter. The Redsmith wants to know how was the beer? He sent me a package uh, two weeks ago, I think. And the beer was excellent, although it was very, very strong. I think one of them had 12% or something. Still, I really enjoyed it. During your time YouTubing, what have you learned about your making process that you weren't aware before? I talked about that in my last vlog. I'm now aware that my product is the process. I think that's the biggest lesson I learned so far and that changed my whole perspective on making. Um, and it allows me to appreciate that much, 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 much more. Because before, on, before YouTube, I thought I just had to, you know, bash out products, products, products to make some money. And now realizing that the process is where I can earn some money as well. Just that just relaxes me and that makes me really, really happy. Make It Mazio wants to know if I have a, a non-maker woodworking YouTube channel or podcast that inspires me. Of course, Casey Neistat. I think everybody's watching Casey Neistat. He is just, oh, he's so talented. But I have to say that lately I haven't been watching too much YouTube. I really need to get back to that. Andy Berkey, I think it's your birthday today, right? So happy birthday, Andy. Um, and he wants to know, can you explore the very inception of a design in your mind, uh, that point in time when it becomes clear what's next? I think that um, my 10 second videos that I made lately, that those are the perfect translation for how an idea feels in my head. The inception point is very hard to tell, but it's like you walk around the street and then suddenly you have to stop and think about the whole process and it's like this fast forward movie in my head basically and then I know what to do. But the second that the idea hits me, it's just, oh, that is so short. I don't, I don't even know what it feels like because it's over in a second and then this little movie starts. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Sorry, I hope I make sense. Bill from One Workshop. What do you do when you hit a roadblock 
um, and don't know how to proceed with your project. I stop immediately. I leave my workshop. I do something else. I watch a movie. I meet a friend or I drink a coffee. I go for a walk with Smudo. I just stop working. And then eventually, eventually it all clears up and I know what to do next. And then I get back to the shop and continue. I don't want to make this too long, so I will save some questions for my next vlog. Thanks for asking me though. Um, next up, I will be on the Maker Fair in Hanover this Saturday. I think it will arrive around 11 o'clock and I will leave around six. So there's plenty of time to hang out and grab a coffee. If you're there, let me know. Maybe you can send me a tweet or a message on Facebook. I would love to meet you guys and I would love to hang out. So that's it. Meaning it's time for... The Fratellis Costello Music. Um, the Fratellis are a rock band from Scotland and this particular album is from 2006, meaning it's 10 years old now. It's a very, very cool record if you're into rock music. They've been compared to the Libertines and to Arctic Monkeys a lot. I would definitely start with listening to Henrietta, Got My Nuts From A Hippie and Chelsea Dagger, of course. I think Chelsea Dagger is the big hit on this record. I hope you enjoyed this week's vlog. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Bye.